Here we go. I want to welcome everybody to the uh, Friday Came to Believe Recovery Live broadcast. Um, I want to welcome everybody from all over the country here and all over the world watching us as we bring uh, subjects of recovery um, to you and discussion topics. Uh, my name is Tom Williams. I am a recovered alcoholic. Um, today, uh, we're going to be talking about how our movement spread into the UK and even into Europe and started from a small single retreat uh, to uh, as many as 18 retreats will run uh, in uh, 2022. We would expect anyway, along with the virtual retreats. Uh, today I have with me is Gordon Lowe, D. Cunniff, and Paul Doyle, who were instrumental in the start and uh, expansion of this movement and are still just completely involved today in the movement and our retreats um, as they continue to grow internationally. And we'll talk about where we're thinking about going. I'm sure these guys have some um, aspirations as to where they want to move it. Gordon has been instrumental in moving it into Europe, in Vienna and different places. And we've talked about it in different languages and trying to have it go that way. So there's a lot of stuff, very exciting stuff. Uh, last week, we talked about the movement in the US. So this week, we thought we'd bring these guys on and talk about the movement. Now, these guys are all involved with us too here in the US. Gordon came over in 2015. I met him then. I met Dee later on, but she's been over too to retreats here. And so has Paul. Paul's been here to retreats since uh, 89, five retreats over here in the, in the United States. So it's very much a, a common movement that we have. It's just, we're gonna illuminate on some of the differences if there are any in the international uh, realm. As we always do, we wanna do our t-shirt giveaway at the beginning. <laughs> so Lisa is our wizard behind the screen. She's monitoring our Facebook right now. And the first uh, person who engages or comments, Lisa's going to pick out, not the first person, she's going to pick somebody at random. And we're going to send you the I Am Recovered shirt. So she's going to pick a name and we'll announce it. And then you can send us your address and we'll have that shirt sent out to you. Uh, as we always do, if you guys have any questions, please feed them on the chat and Lisa will pass them on to me. These guys would be more than happy to answer any questions you have about recovery or the international movement or anything that they can answer. We'd love to answer some questions today for you. So feel free to give us, um, give us those questions. Uh, at the end of the show, we're gonna give away the End Addiction shirt that's behind me over my other shoulder here. We're gonna give that End Addiction <laughs> t-shirt away. And uh, you know, I wanna announce the, uh, the retreat uh, coming up in three weeks is the 19th to the 21st. We call it VR9. Um, virtual retreat. Our last virtual retreat was so wonderful. 42 brand new people. And guys, this is what we're out for. Uh, the, the three of us, the four of us, our mission in life is to end addiction. Our mission in life is to just pass on what was given to us. We got recovered and we, we're, we're making every stride that we can to hold that message as true as we received it. Right from the horse's mouth, as it were. Uh, from Clarence Snyder, who gave it to Steve, who gave it to us. And we are every effort to have that message that, that produced a 93% success rate back then. We're looking to have that kind of success rate. And have you say, I am recovered, just like the t-shirt says. I know some of you are saying recovered, we can't be recovered. Well, you can, and the first page of the big book says so. If you just open it up, you don't have to look too far. There are thousands of men and women who have recovered. So we have our winner for the t-shirt. Lisa says, Ashley Wilson. Oh. Ashley, oh, oh, Ashley. You, you know Ashley, yay. Ashley oh, won Ashley. the t-shirt. Hey, so if she sends her address to the um, message in the chat. Uh, we'll get that out to you right away. Yay, Ashley. <laughs> um, <laughs> So let's, let's, let's get right into it today. Um, we had this wonderful discussion yesterday. Uh, so I'm really excited to talk about it with all of you viewers today. Um, last week, we talked about the movement in the United States, which really didn't take off until the late 80s, 90s, while Clarence ran one retreat 
from the 60s all the way up till the late 80s, early 90s. It really didn't start to blow up to what it is today until into the 90s and even more so in the 2000s. And so we've seen this acceleration. Aside from COVID, we were moving at crazy speeds, the movement. And the movement being our message, reaching people who want, hear about this recovery message and they, they, wanna, they want it too. Um, we have a, a, a similar movement going on over in the UK and in Europe. Now that movement was started uh, really with the first retreat back in 1993. And Paul was very instrumental in getting that first retreat started over in the UK. I know that Steve, it was a team effort, I know, uh, to get that first Came to Believe retreat started. But Paul, I'd love you to tell us, uh, tell everybody, how did that happen? I mean, how did you hear about us? I mean, you know, back in the 89, we weren't over in Europe. How, how did you hear about us and how did it come about? Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Hi, everyone. My name is Paul Doyle. I'm a recovered alcoholic. It's great to be here today uh, doing this. And um, one of the recovery mentions in the big book, one of my favorite ones, is on page 133, uh, line 14, where it says, we who have recovered are miracles of mental health. And, um, <laughs> you know, I know it works. It says that there, there are those who suffer from grave emotional and mental disorders. That's where, that's what I identify with. So um, my, uh, my sober date is um, uh, January 1985, 31st of January 1985. So I'm coming up to uh, 36 years. And um, I reached the rock bottom in this room, helpless and hopeless, nowhere to go, lost everything. And um, AA come into work, went into AA. And uh, two years later, someone had given me an audio tape of uh, Clarence Snyder. And at the time I just started to, um, to work as a taxi driver. So I had plenty of time to listen to Clarence and uh, he got my attention. And I still was at that fear that we all know about. And he was sort of a comfort mm -hmm. to me. Every time I got in my cab, I would put him on and listen uh, to his experience. And he was sponsored by Dr. Bob. And uh, he would talk about the Oxford group and uh, the, the beginnings of AA. And um, it, it, especially the steps, he, he would talk about the steps and, and the steps being very simple. And that's what I needed. And uh, I went through the steps with, with a man, the way Clarence uh, talked about, but uh, you can only talk on a 80 minute tape, you know, what about 10, 11 and 12? That's where I was lost. Mm -hmm. How do I live? I've done nine steps, so how do I live on 10, 11, and 12, the construction steps. So that drove me to find out about um, more about Clarence, where a man, uh, I found a man in Florida, and he put me in touch uh, with uh, Grace Snyder, which I didn't know that, I never knew anything about Grace at that time. So um, I ended up in 1989, uh, being in a herd house, I was one of the last alcoholics there uh, the night before the retreat. I uh, went through the retreat to, with uh, Steve Foreman, took us all through the steps on the Saturday. And um, I come home and studied. They, they did me uh, the tapes of the retreat and the material, leaflets, books. I come to this room and start studying and uh, started to pray because I wanted my, my prayer was in the line of, wouldn't it be great to start these retreats here? Mm -hmm. And um, in 1980, 1982, I went over again with my wife and uh, we discussed about the retreat being here in 1993. And that's what happened. So they, Steve Foreman, um, Steve Foreman, let me get the names right here. Steve Foreman and uh, 
uh, Liz Rogers and Annette Nielsen and Sue and um, Sue Foreman come over in 93 to start the first retreat in Buckfast Abbey, which was already booked in for this retreat. And I looked, when I come home, I looked at AA in the steps completely different. I had that spiritual experience that we talk about in the big book and the steps and my life changed and your life, your life can change too. Maybe you're in AA for some years, but uh, you're not happy. Come to the retreat, come, come to these retreats and I'm sure the same thing can happen to you that has happened to a lot of us going through the 12 steps, the way it was taught in the beginning by Dr. Bob, Clarence Snyder, Steve Foreman, and now we're carrying that same message. God bless. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. That was a great synopsis of what happened. I know there's more to that story. Um, I think I was at that retreat in 93 or 92 when you were down in Florida, but I don't remember. I think I was um, back then. Um, so you got so lit up by these steps by Clarence, like all of us did, you know, once we all got connected and I myself didn't have any, um, any experience with AA outside of Came to Believe. My first AA meeting was a Came to Believe meeting, but I think that Dee and Gordon will talk about that they had experiences that were not came to believe. So you started that first retreat in Bugfest Abbey in 1993. And uh, you said maybe 30 or 40 people were at that first retreat. That's right, Tom. All right. And so today, how many, how many have, how many times have you run it at Bugfest? Would you say, has it run every year since then? Yes, sir. we started off with three and then cut it down to two. Um, we've done uh, 64 retreats. 64 retreats. <laughs> and and it's a demand thing, right? I mean, people want it. They keep the message is so strong that you you don't have any trouble ha having those two retreats a year, right? Yep. I think it was done by word of mouth. People going back to their meetings mm -hmm. and maybe people seeing something different about them. Where have you been? Like, oh, I've been on right. this retreat to Buck Fast. Went mm -hmm. through the steps uh, over the weekend and something happened to me. Wow. 64 retreats. So... Uh, I know now, like I spoke at the beginning, there's 18 retreats going on and, and Dee and Gordon are going to talk a lot more about how the movement now has moved all over London or England, UK and Ireland as they've been involved. But what was the second one, like the second location? Where, where, where did it spread first after Buckfest? Um, I believe, um, uh, by the way, uh, an old scully was uh, involved in the first retreat. Okay. And um, he took it back to Liverpool, I believe. Liverpool was where it went uh, as the second. That's right. The first expansion. And that would have been some two, three years later or a lot later. I think it was a few years later. Mm -hmm. There's been a couple of retreats down in Cornwall as okay. well. Yeah. All in that time frame. So, yeah. um, Dee, when did you get involved in this? And... What year did you come and at what point were, because now today you're running two or three retreats, I think, right? What, how did you get involved? Um, because I was really ill and I <laughs> needed to go through the 12 steps. I didn't go. In fact, the funny thing is, I did think I was going for a spa weekend. I thought I was <laughs> going away because I was uh, completely unwell. Paul knows he's laughing because I arrived and I was bad tempered and upset and I, I hadn't drunk for three years but I'd been in AA and there was no program like the founders um, you know taught I just wasn't introduced to it so I turned up and um, I on the Friday I was very very rude very um, and Paul was very sweet to me he said to me as I was sounding off about things not being right he said it will be okay it's going to be okay. And I remember that and it quieted me down. The next day I went through the 12 step program and um, I had a massive spiritual experience. It was done as the founders did it through the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, I'd never seen it in AA. 
or uh, fellowships like that. And that's why I argued, because I said it's not how it was. Um, and from there, having recovered um, around 2004, 2005, um, I, des I then went on to eventually um, run my own retreats with a, a process in between of, you know, sort of being unsure or whatever. But I knew, I, I knew from that day, on that weekend, when my whole life changed, I knew that this was something really different. And um, so I was, on the day, the last thing really to say on this is that on the day, on the step, on the, on the step seven, on the day on the Saturday, I know that God told me to give, you know, to um, give away what had been so freely given to me. Mm. And that was, I heard that read, I'd only heard it, just heard it read. It didn't resound, but I know I was told that. So I just had to do that. Um, so that's what it's about. So I've been involved then with, you know, spreading the message. <laughs> so what year was your first retreat? Um, it was 2004. And where, that was in Bugfest? That was not, that was a, a one-off. It was Brunel Manor. So we went okay. into Brumal Manor, which was like just a one-off where there was a, a 60th birthday going on. Um, so actually, yeah, so I think it's probably 2005. I was trying to remember which, when it was the end of 2004, 2005. But that was the first one. And then I started up um, the Came to Believe Retreats down in Kent in, um, uh, you know, around about 12 years ago. Okay. So very interesting, before we get Gordon to tell us his background, the both of you, it's, it's very interesting. I think the audience maybe would be interested too. We talk a lot of, in Came to Believe Recovery about the founder's message and the retreats, the steps being done in a weekend and this, just doing the steps, right? And an interesting, Dee, that you said in three years in AA, you hadn't really heard anything about doing this in no. regular, and Paul's, you, you, that was your experience as well. Not, not heard anything about doing the steps, even though that's the only thing the book has for us to do is the steps. Right. Very interesting. Well, the thing that was, was that everyone had told me that the steps were in the 12 and 12, 12 steps and 12 traditions, mm. which is nice, very, very interesting purple book with some nice essays mm. in it, which are interesting to read once you've recovered. Right, um, right, and right. when I got there, I said, the steps are not in the big book. And Paul Doyle put me correct, corrected me and um, took me through the program. And um, I was shocked that no one had ever told me that. I was shocked. Oh. And it's so, still happening, Paul. Um, Paul knows that. And I know, I think that, um, you know, I'm sure Gordon's seen it. I still see it in AA, still see that people who don't know the founder's message. And we're, we're going to get to that in a minute. I think we, it's very important as our movement grows. Uh, let's, we want to talk a little bit about that after we get through. So here we got the foundations going. We got these guys... And the retreats are starting to grow. And it's in around 2004, 2005. Um, these had been at a different retreat. We got Liverpool going. You got Buckfest going. And so, Gordon, when did you come in? When, what was your first experience with Came to Believe? Uh, my, my first experience was in 2012. <clears throat> I was uh, four months out of treatment. And, and I was blessed enough to... Uh, go on a, a, a sort of a, a came to believe bus that we used to go, we used to go around in a bus everywhere, a little, a little mini bus. And there was about eight of us and we drove down into Buckfast Abbey. And this was my first retreat, you know, four months into it. And Noel Scully, just as you mentioned there, Paul, Noel Scully was with us as well in the, in the bus. And, uh, you know, we drove up there. I had a clue what I was going to be doing. And, you know, I just, I was just going along for the ride, really. <laughs> And uh, we went through the went through the Paul took me through the steps and and you know I I, I was at this um, I, I just went along with it nothing you know like what you you explained yourself really happened you know I didn't I didn't nothing happened as far as I was concerned and come the end of the retreat where you're, you're supposed to you know you you're asked if you could uh, stand up and say a bit of what you retrieved what you got out of the retreat and. Uh, Paul asked me, and then I said, okay. And I thought, I'm going to have to make something up here because nothing's happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I, I thought, well, I'm four months sober. And uh, I asked Noel to do my uh, uh, fifth step, and uh, he was 40 years sober. So, wow. uh, and, then, and then we arrived at four o'clock. I thought, I'll just, I'll just make something up around four, the number four. <laughs> so, so <laughs> I was doing this, making this story up in front of everybody. And everybody was like this, 
And I said, what's up with this lot? What's up with everybody? And I hadn't realised, and I only realised when I sat down, that the clock was behind me was stuck at four o'clock. And it just, and somehow it just, that one, you know, that one experience, that one experience lit me up. Wow. It lit me up and gave me a hunger to keep coming back. And in my first year, you know, I went to four, four retreats in my first year. You know, Dee was, Dee was one of them that we went to and I went back to Paul's and went to Lola Hall, the, one of the mills in Liverpool. But it left me without hunger. That's what it, it did. It left me hungry for more. And it's always left me hungry for more. You know, it, it, it's, not, it's not, for me, it's not an end in itself. It, I just want to keep going and keep drinking that you know, that, that, that living and refreshing water that I get from when I go to retreat. But what, what really, what, one of the biggest things for me was, is that I was allowed to explore my faith. I wasn't told, I was allowed to explore it. You know, when in the, in the, in the, in the live retreats, when you can, when you've got that talk time, you know, amongst other people, mm -hmm. I was allowed to explore it. I wasn't, you know, what I found in AA was that I was, you can't even talk about it. Mm. Your faith, but in 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 the came to believe um, movement, I'm allowed to explore it. I don't have to get somewhere; I can just grow in it, and that's what I found really, really was just it, it just drew me in like a magnet. You know, it just drew me in. So you yeah. know that was, uh, that's why I've, you know, and I didn't, and I got involved. Um, you know, because of that, I just wanted to do service, you know, any service, you know, anything. I just wanted to be there, you know. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to um, be a part of when uh, the Derby retreat opened in 2013. And uh, and then um, my, the, the chap who was running that uh, became a vicar and uh, the wow. post was available. So I stepped into that uh, to run that retreat in 2017. So... I've been running that since 2017. And then the same year we started one in Crew, which um, I, I, I started to run that one as well. And uh, I had a friend who I was sponsoring in, uh, sponsoring in Vienna. And um, we, we always used to joke with each other, you know, well, why don't we do a retreat here? And, you know, and just, oh, no, no, no. And then one year we said, well, why not? Why not? I thought, yeah, why not? Why don't I just talk, stop talking about it and do it? So we, we started one there, you know, and uh, we have, we have uh, uh, you know, we started the movement over there. And it was, that's how it just, how it just keep snowballing from one to the other. On that particular one, it, it went from Vienna to Warsaw to Munich in that one year. Wow. It, it didn't happen after that. It just went from one to the other to the other. Wow. Mm. It was amazing. Amazing. Just amazing. As soon as the people get touched yeah. by this, they yeah. want to tell people. They tell people and people get all lit up and excited and wanted it. So it was amazing. You, you know, everybody looks at us here um, and we're pretty put together on this screen, right? And we're well-spoken and clean cut. I heard Gordon's story in 2015. He came over to the Long Island retreat and told his story. And boy, oh boy, guys, I know we all have a war story to tell. But Gordon came from the, I mean, it was the depths in, in your addiction from the story. It's really something to, to see somebody, you and Dee, I've heard her story from the back. Paul, uh, what this thing has done for all of us. And that's what you said, Gordon. It lights us on fire, what it's done for us. Our mission is to spread it to other people. And there's such a need today. So Gordon, you, when you came to that retreat, you got lucky enough to, to be exposed to it pretty quick on, it sounds like four months yeah. after rehab. Yeah. 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 So would you, did you identify as recovered before you went to retreat or not till after? Certainly not till after, no. Okay. Not, 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 not till, till after, no. And that's your all's experience. I, I that, what I have heard, nobody is, is told to be recovered. We're very, we're, we have a niche in that a little bit. Not that there aren't others I've met who have been doing similar things that we do, but as a kind of a rule, if you don't go through it the founder's way, recovering is the title, not so much being recovered, that, that whole idea. Do you guys 
is that was that your experience too prior to coming to came to believe what would you have called yourself prior to coming to the retreat d okay so you definitely had to say you were recovering because otherwise you were risking almost like a bad you know it's bad omen that you know you can't say that because you can't possibly be recovered um and it's a complete misunderstanding of what recovered means it was like a sort of thought that you would be like that you were either going to be like an angel that would be never doing anything wrong ever or that you would you know be um uh you know that uh physically you know that you had no you could never ever relapse well it doesn't say that you recover from the hopeless state of mind and body that's what you recover from and the thinking that precedes the drink and so you know you get a defense against that drink which comes from god and it comes from a power greater than us we we call God quite clearly. We're very happy to do that and came to believe because that's what, you know, the founder's God. Um, and it was Christian God as well. But we don't push that on anyone. Um, we just tell people what happened. And recovered can happen when you've got a very powerful creator that is, um, you know, healing your mind, um, healing you of an illness. So, um, but the thing about it is it's still an issue you do get some meetings that are big book focused um, that, that people will say they're recovered. But um, I think that the thing that's really different about came to believe is that we say we show we're recovered by the actual process we go through. People actually show it in their lives on a, you know, as, mm. as a long term basis, you know, and um, I think that we had a survey, didn't we, Tom? where um, we ask people who've been to the retreat, and I know how hard it is to get arguments back about being recovered. And was it 94% of the people that had been, uh, were saying that they now identified, they understood what recovered means? The problem is, no one else, if you don't get told what it means, how on earth are you gonna know? And we show people what it means and show that it's true. If you want it, you've got to do the work, you've got to do the steps, you know, and live it in mm -hmm. your life. Right. Twelve afterwards, it's not like, oh well, I'll just go and sit down now. It's not like that. We we need to work this program in our life, and we offer follow up. You know, in came to believe, it's good. We offer good follow up. Thank you. you know, it's it's. Um, I want to ask you guys. I'm going to ask Paul something in a minute, but um, Gordon made a great a statement. I think that encompasses really our philosophy or what what the founders even meant. And while we know, and just a little bit of history, a study. You find that 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 the big book was written. The principles are all the Christian principles out of the Bible. That is, the principles that underlie it. But what Gordon said is so pertinent that nothing is pushed on you. You but you are allowed to explore your faith. That's what we do at the King The process allows you to connect with God and let Him build that relationship with you. Absolutely. Is that accurate? Gordon, to Absolutely. what you were saying? Absolutely. That's what I, that, that's what I, that's what gave me that thirst was that I was allowed to explore my faith in my own time. There was no rushing or anything. We're just allowed to do that. And that, and that, and I was encouraged to do that, actually. I was encouraged to do that. Yeah. And, and so, um, but in the meantime, you went through the process of the steps, the program, you know, I know when I did it, we, we're very much get you through it quick because that's what they did back then. Mm -hmm. They did it in a weekend or a very short peri period of time. And then you're growing, right? You were exposed, but you still had those tools. How important were the tools for all you guys? Let's say Gordon first, that you were given at that retreat. You know, the practical tools, the working 10, 11, and 12, some very practical things to do in life. How important do you see that those were, that you had them explain to you that, the way they were at that well, retreat? Well, my problem wasn't alcohol. My problem was living. So I needed, I needed a program. I needed a program how to live, and the tools that I, I had there at the, at the, you know, the steps ten, eleven, and twelve, were perfect for me. They're absolutely perfect for me because they they gave me a, a sort of a, a way of living, which I, I you know, I, I, I needed, because I didn't know how to live in the world. So I needed those things. I needed you're, that you're, steps 10, 11, and 12. Right. So you're living 10, 11, and 12 while you're growing in your faith. Absolutely. Yes. The power. So the, these things went on at this, they go on kind of at the same time. At the same time. The same yeah. Time. They mesh together. Yeah. So Paul, you talked about at the beginning that 
that was one of your issues was this 10, 11, and 12. How do I go on and live? So do you see it the same as Gordon did, that those tools, those practical tools of 10, 11, and 12 are indispensable in your recovery? And would you call them indispensable at this point? I think um, Gordon you know, got it right there. You know, um, when I come back from the retreat, I got back in my cab and I was seeking. And that's what they told me to do. That's what God says. You know, search, knock, and the door will open. Seek and you will find. And um, Grace prayed over me and she said, you go back to Plymouth and let your light shine. <laughs> and Sounds I, like Grace. I'll never yeah. forget that. And um, I started to stop at um, church doorways, got some leaflets, you know, Jesus died for your sins and things like that. And I was born into the Catholic uh, religion and I left that and um, started to go to uh, a Bible, a Bible church and a family church. I've been going there for 20 years. And the recovery bit um, was a part of 10, 11 and 12. I think I grew in, I grew into being recovered by practicing 10, 11 and 12 on a daily basis, especially um, the 11th step has become very, very important to me in my life, where I give, give myself, give my time, give um, my money. You know, this, this program to me is free. It's, if people are watching, we want to give it to you free. You don't, there's not, you don't have to pay anything. And we're, we're not paid either. We do this <laughs> because it's deep inside us and we can't help ourselves. We have to carry the truth of the 12 steps that um, Dr. Bob passed on to Clarence. Clarence passed on to Steve and Steve passed it on to me. That's where I'm from. And somebody had to point that out to me, where, where that seed had come from. And what a life it is. I've, you know, it's all about change. Right. I'm a different person that woke up. <laughs> there was four horsemen, you know, in this room 36 years ago. Could you, could, could you have even imagined when you started that first retreat that the movement would be where it is today? No. There's no way. I never thought, I, I'm very dyslectic, so I never thought about the growth. Mm -hmm. I don't think about that. I just do it. You just do it. I just do it. Let's talk about the growth now, guys, because we're in this growth phase now. You guys have 18 retreats. We have a like... Uh, 30 running when we get back running in, in 2012. And this team on here, let, let all of you uh, uh, that are watching are not only involved uh, deeply uh, with their local retreats, they have become deeply involved organizationally in strategic and tactical uh, initiatives to move this thing that has been started and kind of snowballing. Uh, Gordon and uh, Dee and Paul have been active in our virtual retreats. Uh, and that's really what we've been running lately. Most of you, if you've been new to Came to Believe, only know us by the virtual retreats in the last year, because that's all, we haven't run any on-ground retreats. Uh, um, but these guys have all been um, instrumental involved in time on our weekends that we give to, to spread these, this word and message. Um, and so, I know that D and I, and I think Gordon too, because we Jordan was in on the first one, right? Gordon, you came, you were in on the first virtual retreat. Yes. yes. Yeah. We didn't we didn't know if this was gonna work. D and I had no idea. And some of us were like, well, what do we do? Let's try it. And um it it has worked so well that we've run our we're running our ninth one in three weeks, in less than that many months, I think, or in so many months. And we had a record attendance at the last one with 40 newcomers. So our message was, is getting out to those that have never heard this before. So that's why we're doing these things like this today. We want you in our audience that have never heard these things these guys are talking about. If you've never heard it and it's intriguing you and you look at these bright, happy, successful faces of people that were down and out, deadbeat drunks and addicts <laughs> who have gotten their lives back 
come to the retreat in the weekend. It can happen for you. It happens to us. It happens to thousands of people. If you spend a weekend and it doesn't happen to you, what do you got to lose? You know? Um, but as we move forward, this movement, um, clearly there's a need, right, guys? Uh, there's a, a need, and the need has gotten greater during this pandemic. 18 or 20% increases in suicides. Overdoses have gone up. Alcohol use has gone up 40%. Just an incredible need uh, in the United States, for sure. And I've read some specifics in the UK. What do you guys see as the need in the UK? How, how, what do you see uh, us going? And where where would it? Where do you th where do you see us in the next two or three years? Can I um, put? I, I wouldn't mind sort of like having a comment on that because uh, sure. I think I think that something has happened, and it, um, you know I've been very clear that that God has done all this for me. I'm not you know this program has been given. It's a you know, we've been given an amazing gift, which has come through these 12 steps. And, and there's been a movement, I've watched a movement, it's almost like I can see a map in my head of the world. And I've seen like the light, you know, a little fire, you know, down in Florida, at that beginning, and then the lights of the fires coming out, and then a light in Plymouth, and then lights come up all over the UK. At the same time as um, uh, Gordon was starting up, Vienna, we had no idea that at the same time we were starting Spain. So <laughs> we, uh, we opened up a retreat in Spain, which somebody had got in touch with us. We weren't going out there being like, a lot of this comes to us, you know, it just mm, comes. Yeah. And I went like, oh, I, I just remember one day me and Gordon having a, oh, so you're doing Spain. Oh, when you're doing Vienna. Oh, you know, <laughs> um, it was just amazing. <laughs> like it's been organic very very moved by what i call the power of the spirit that heals us big book talks about you know the spirit you know the sunlight of the spirit and i believe that's what's done it what i think also is i love the fact that maybe there's been some dark things going on with this pandemic you know some dark things have happened and um, i remember having this phone call with tom and i remember it being like oh we possibly won't be able to run the next couple of retreats. Ha ha. You know, <laughs> like this is in March. And um, well, let's do a virtual retreat. Do you know what? It went really well. And I just believe that it is that power. And I believe something has kicked off again. In my mind's eye, I see that that these ground on the ground retreats will start again. They're going to start again. They'll be up and running at the end of this year. We've already got some dates in. But we will also keep going with the Zoom because we've got this international audience, mm. which we didn't get to before. We've had people from Greece, we've had people from Germany, we've had people from Scandinavia, we've got people from Spain and, and, and all over the UK. Ireland has really kicked off. We've had um, retreats in Ireland on the ground for a while, but we've got a whole new cohort, cohort of people who've come through the retreats from Ireland, from Southern Ireland and Northern Ireland. So there's a whole new world opening. And I believe that um, it's um, a spiritual movement and I think it's amazing and it's going to get better. That's how I think. How do, what do you see um, in, in Europe coming up, Gordon? How do you, how do you see, <laughs> yeah. you got, what's, what's the next one that you've got your sights on? And we'll help, we're going to do it as a team if we can, right? Um, Where do you see? Uh, I see uh, Italy, Czechoslovakia and Slovakia. And Moscow, watch wow. out. And Moscow, watch out. Moscow, watch out. <laughs> you know, they one. I think on they say people. one in three deaths in in your in in Russia are alcohol related, yeah. just alcohol related. One in three. Little bit of work to be done. Yeah, Moscow, watch out. Right. Yeah. That's <clears> the next movement. So the movement. The, how do you guys see? We talked a little bit about, you know, we touched on the idea that you hadn't heard this message in AAD and Paul, and I guess, Gordon, you weren't in it long enough to have not heard the message <laughs> before you hit retreat. Um, I know that in the United States, if you were to go to a regular, what we call a mainstream AA meeting, and there's great AA, AA I don't want anyone to believe that I'm bashing AA at all. There's, it's a wonderful place to go to. It's the answer. People should go to the meetings. But there is a, there's a, their success rate 
um, is statistically not as not 93 percent permanent sustainable sobriety like it was back at the beginning. Um, and we've we've identified some things in in AA in the United States and this message that we bring. We run into some resistance here in the United States when we try to bring this take the steps in a weekend message. Is that the same in the UK? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I don't know um, what you, I mean, I know that Paul has seen, has had resistance. I know over the years I've seen Paul have some people, you know, push back at his message. Um, um, it's quite tough sometimes. And I remember that, um, you know, that now there's still people, if I would explain what we do, that just, it's just like incredible, they're incredible about it is it's just like no that can't possibly be so but now in the AA meetings um, Paul and I go to a couple of AA meetings that are we go to the same ones and um, there's young people young men and young women who've been to the retreat and it, we're like the old guys and they're saying mm -hmm. I went to a retreat I went through it on the weekend I got you know I've had this massive spiritual experience but like Paul said Afterwards, they go back and they really study and have a look at the book. They go deeper into the book. They look into the history. They start to find out what they, they need. You know, they, they work the steps deeper. They work 10, 11 and 12. I mean, I find step 10 is absolutely vital that, you know, I really need my step 10. These guys are all talking about it. They're doing it. So slowly, the people in AA who may have that problem of thinking it doesn't work, it's not just the old guys or old girls like me saying it. You've got these young people saying that that's changed their lives. And um, so I think that there's a movement happening to, to change that. I do believe that. But it's still a lot of pushback, a lot of pushback. It's, it's really interesting. Uh, and I, we find that here. Let's talk about quick um, the recovered versus recovering. So in the United States, if I go into an AA meeting, most of them, I would say nine out of 10, if I were to identify as recovered, <clears throat> would get some sort of gristle. You know, people would be tussle about identifying as recovered all the way up to as much as uh, having comments made in the meeting about that you can't be recovered to as much as, as being chastised right in the meeting that you can't, can't say that. Is that a very similar, is that something similar in the UK? Gordon, yes. what was yeah, that? Ab absolutely, absolutely. So I know that and I, I respect other people's views. Mm -hmm. So I wear recovery. You know, I wear it when I go in. I am, you know, for me, when I went, when I first, like before, when I first came in, I was restless, irritable and discontented. Today, I am comfortable, joyful and contented with my life. And you can wear that. In a, and people can notice that and see that there's something different. I'm not complaining about when I was drinking blah, 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 many years ago. Um, you know, I, I, you, 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 there's something different about people who have been on the came to believe. There's some, some life in their eyes, you know? So I don't have to say, you know, I don't have to upset someone to say I'm recovered just because I am recovered. I could wear recovery for me. So that's a great point, Gordon. It's not that we say we're recovered. We are recovered. Yeah. Right. I love that. And, 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 and you're right. Saying whether we can say it or should say it takes some wisdom sometimes to, to not turn off a newcomer and maybe to wear it is a better, we all wear it, right? We shine that light. What does Dale Barker always says, let it look good on you. And that's what Grace told you to do. Right, Paul? Right. Oh. The book says, um, why shouldn't we laugh? We have recovered. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Where that smile, that ready break smile, man. Right. Absolutely. Um, so, um, 12.45, we've got about five more minutes. Um, this has just been a really, really uh, inspiring um, discussion for me to hear such success and such of a movement going over there as well as it's over there. And I, I've been to the UK twice uh, went up to the North Pennines retreat and spoke uh, twice, actually, I was there uh, and have been around to to meet all these guys in person several times. Um, 
I think uh, I just can't even, the sky's the limit as to where we're gonna go with this. Uh, I know that, that there's a need and we have the message. And uh, if you are um, looking, uh, watching us today and wondering when we're gonna be in your town, if it was up to me, it would be next week. But it's going to be as as soon as we can. We want to bring the message, and we would encourage you to go to our website and keep an eye on it, and reach out to us and let us know uh, where there's need and where you need help. We'll connect you. We have a we have we came to believe recovery meetings that are listed on our website. We have the virtual retreat, and the virtual retreat, guys. I know some of you are scared of this Zoom and the internet, but it works. The message comes across, and people are saying that they're recovered, right? 94% of everybody that has been through the virtual retreats that answered our survey, and it's a majority answer the surveys, identify themselves as recovered afterwards. So they got something, they, they learned something, something happened to them in the retreats. And then they're, they're, they're back again. So let's talk about that for a minute. Why? And you each give me your, your answer in a minute or so or less, if you can. Gordon, why do you keep coming back? Why do you keep coming back to the retreats? Uh, three words. Pass it on. It's just pass it on. Um, I, there's something happens inside that you can't not pass it on. <laughs> just, you just can't. It's just, you might try to just sit back, but you can't. <laughs> I just can't pass it on. You just got to give it away. Pass it on. And, and giving it away recharges you to keep giving it away. <laughs> I mean, look at his eyes, guys, if you're watching in this. If he's talking about it. He's lit up. That guy is recovered. D, what, what keeps you coming back? Um, um, it's an internal thing as, as well. It's like I have to give away what's been so freely given to me. And even when adversities come, and even if I get it wrong sometimes, and um, I've just known I'm meant to do it. And even though I've not always been popular, you know, because it's a message some people don't want to hear, I have to just keep going. And I have to be, um, it's, it's, it's the same as Gordon. It's something inside. It's fun as well. It's amazing. <laughs> That's fun. And it's great. You go in. So on the virtual retreats at the moment, We've got people that have come. They've never, ever done recovery anywhere else and except on Zoom. And they're coming back and they run break rooms, like break rooms. Yeah, and they do stuff true. And, and, then, and then they'll say, oh, God, I just feel amazing because I've just helped someone. So it's step 12. It's, it's part of what we've got to do. Hey, Paul, what keeps you coming back? Well, 1989, you know, that first <laughs> coming back and praying and something happened to me and I was driven, you know, I was in the right place at the right time yeah. and God uses people that no one else would choose. And I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> use me to, to start this off. So I don't take any credit of it. Mm -hmm. I was used. And there were some dark times, too, over the years. But I was driven and still am. I can't help myself. Wow, it's, it's kind of what you all said, the same thing. So I'm, I'm right there with you guys. I'm like you, Gordon. My first year, I went to like eight retreats. You know, I went to one and then I went to another one and another one and another one and another one. I just couldn't, couldn't help but, um, but give it away. You know, what what really drives me too is watching the newcomer change. When we see them come in on Friday and they're kind of dent, I mean, there's a tangible change. And we even see it on virtual retreats. We'll look at someone's mm -hmm. face. And on Sunday, there's been a profound change. There is just nothing more motivating that to say maybe something I said or something that was inspired by me and us help that person see this light and find the truth. And their life changes. And I just can't stop doing it either. Going to passing it on. I can't stop doing it. All right, let's do the last t-shirt giveaway quick and then we'll do some closing comments. Guys, 
Lisa's looking for somebody to engage the end addiction shirt. It's behind me. You can give us your size. So we want to go ahead and give away the end addiction shirt. Of course you can buy or donate and we'll send you any one of those shirts. And we have some other stuff on the website for donations. Um, and I do want to mention that a little right now. And while uh, giving the 12 steps and presenting the message, none of us do that for money. It's all volunteer when we give the message. Some of the things that we do, running these Facebook lives, um, negotiating with treat centers and things like that, it does, it does cost some money for us to be able to get out. So we do raise some money, just like AA does. They pass the hat and it costs some money to do some things. If you'd be willing to help us in our message, uh, spreading the message of end addiction, please go ahead on our website and donate anything helps. Uh, none of us are getting rich. None of us, it's all just goes to help. And the needy, we, as I, I was talking to someone the other day and I believe I've been involved in that came to believe recovery since 92. I've never seen anyone turned away from a retreat because of money. We've never turned anyone away that I know of because of money. And we wanna go with that today. If you're hurting and you're in need, you get to come and hear this message. We're all committed to that. And we've all committed, like Paul has said, with our own finances to it. But if you're moved so much to help us, we'd love any kind of help that you could give us along with volunteering for us. We need, we need human volunteering, we need money, we need all those things that can help us to spread this message everywhere that we can. Uh, and some of, like I say, some of the efforts that we're, we're, we've been engaged in have helped. We're getting that message out, which brought 40 new people to that last retreat. So we'll wait for Lisa to give us a winner. But uh, um, Dale Barker won it, our friend in Florida. Dale Barker won the end addiction shirt. <laughs> so, Ask him if he's got a red socks top to go with it. Won't he? What he's actually going to get is a Yankees shirt. Yeah, yeah he don't give him that one. No. He thinks he's getting an end addiction, but he's going to get a Yankees shirt on 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 top yeah. of that. Well, it's been a great discussion, guys. Um, I'm just um, I want to thank you three for taking your time. Um, it's six p.m in the UK uh, today. And I, I, I guess everybody in the audience, I didn't really say it, but you guys understand that these three guys are in the UK. They're not in the United States, uh, different parts of the UK. Uh, thank you so much for coming and thank you so much for everything that you do and your friendship to me. Uh, when I met Gordon, we were fast friends the minute we met in Long Island. I think we ate every meal together at that retreat and talked and talked and talked and talked. and. Um, have been friends ever since. And same with D. Once we connected, we, you know, we talk all the time and we really, really are, are, are focused on this mission of ending addiction. Um, so again, I want to thank um, you guys for coming today. Uh, everyone in that audience, there's a retreat in, in February and then there's one in March. And then keep an eye out on our website, both in the UK and in the United States for us to start coming back on ground in the spring, in the summer, certainly in the fall. And certainly by next year, as conditions allow, we'll be back uh, going. We're going to keep the virtual retreats going, keep an eye on it. We're going to be growing things. We're even going to start work trying to get our message into the workplace to help uh, employers to get the message out to their employees. There's a lot of stuff we're trying to do. All of it, it the focus is to end addiction, to have people get freed from this thing that has them in bondage and let them live like we are, happy, joyous, and free. And just lit up to pass the message. Anybody have a last word before we go? Last word of encouragement? Paul. Are we good? Paul, you got a last word of encouragement? I think it should be Paul. <laughs> um, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's uh, brilliant. That's great. That's great. Love it. All right, everybody. Well, we'll see you next week. Uh, next week, we're going to have Ken Burns back with us. And we're going to be talking about the history. He was here about three weeks ago, and it was such a hit. We're going to have him back next Friday on the 5th, talking uh, more about the history of AA and what went on back in Akron and Cleveland. That um, it's really the stuff that, that were all of our roots and our founding. So we'll see you all next week on Came to Believe Recovery, guys. Everybody have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.